let's jump into Oppenheimer. And, and first I want to talk about the movie, and I want to talk about it as a movie. That is the, 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 the you know, just basically what you would consider a movie review, if you will, of it. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and then we'll talk about a little bit about Oppenheimer, the moral evaluation of him, uh, the, the whole project, Los Alamos, the building of the atomic bombs, the use of the atomic bombs. And then we'll talk about Ayn Rand and Ayn Rand's view and uh, the Oppenheimer movie that Ayn Rand wanted, uh, wanted, to, wanted to write. Um, Richard asks a relevant question, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump to this. Um, I'm going to jump to this. Uh, and, he writes, uh, and he writes, do you think a biopic, biographical film can have a theme? What is the extent to which a director can validly seek to convey a theme and or take creative license in a biographical work? So, so the answer to that, I think, is yes. I think it can have a theme to the extent that the, uh, the now, if it's a pure biopic, if you're just telling the story as it is, and the whole story, and nothing but the story, then sure, it, it, it doesn't really have a theme. But one of the things you do as a filmmaker is you choose what to show. You choose what is important and what is not. You choose what time or period of life to focus on and what periods of life not to focus on. Certainly, Oppenheimer, even though it carries, it covers a lot, chooses to focus on certain things and not on others. And through those choices, and, 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 and through those selective choices and your orientation and what you leave out and what you leave in, suddenly there is a theme. I think one of the problems with, and then of course there's a broader issue of, of what the context of which you're telling the story. And here the theme could have been around the atomic bomb or Los Alamos, the development of the atomic bomb. There could have been a theme around that where Oppenheimer's story is told in that context, but it's not a story about Oppenheimer. It might, the, the story might be the atomic bomb, but it's told through the story of Oppenheimer's life. It's not exactly what happens here, but that's part of the problem. Anyway, I mean, first, let me just say, I, I, I think you should see the movie. The movie is, um, is um, it's dramatic, it's powerful, it's, it's beautifully shot. The cinematography is spectacular. There are a few things about the cinematography I don't like, but I'll get to that. Uh, there is, um, it's, it's, it's brilliantly acted. I mean, uh, I, I think the acting, I hope they get, they get Oscars for this. Uh, we'll see. But I think the acting was brilliant. Killian Murphy, who plays Oppenheimer, uh, is excellent. I know Killian from his work on Peaky Blinders. I don't know if you guys have seen Peaky Blinders, but it's an excellent, excellent um, uh, show uh, that it basically is, um, uh, did you, Richard, did you ask that question twice? I don't know, no, it appears here twice for some reason, but you only asked it once. Um, he appears in Peaky Blinders, which is a gangster movie, against the series, I think the five or six uh, seasons, and he's brilliant in it. He's just a brilliant actor in it, and he's very good here. He captures a lot of the subtlety of Oppenheimer, uh, a lot of the conflict, and, and he does it very, very well. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. is excellent in this, uh, playing kind of the bad guy, uh, a, a, political, uh, a political wannabe, uh, kind of uh, somebody who's very, uh, very... Uh, uh, you know, ambitious, ambitious beyond what he uh, what he should be, uh, and um, I think I think uh, I think that that was a fantastic performance. Uh, I mean, even um, uh, you know, even Matt Damon is very good in this. Uh, he, I, I think he plays he plays his part really well. Uh, kind of the understated general who oversees the whole Los Animas uh, project. Uh, Rami Malek has a very small bit in it, but he's good in it. Uh, Florence Pug, uh, who plays uh, who plays uh, Oppenheimer's girlfriend, and Emily Blunt, who plays his wife, are both excellent. So great cast, uh, really amazing, uh, beautiful cinematography, 
uh, very, very powerful, very dramatic. And, and look, at the end of the day, whatever you think of the story and whatever you think of the movie even, well, not whatever you think, well, whatever you think of Oppenheimer as a human being or whatever you think of the movie, the story is amazing. The story is amazing. It's, it's, it tells you the story in highlights, of course, of the development of the nuclear bomb, of the atomic bomb. It's a fascinating story. And it tells you the story of Oppenheimer's, uh, uh, you know, communist sympathies and the trouble he got for those sympathies after the war, during the McCarthy era, and how his security clearance was taken away from him. So all of that you get you you get a, a period piece. You get a, a fascinating look at at the world uh, of that era, and and you get it, and and you're doing that through the eyes of, you know, one of the great, uh, I think, directors of our time, uh, Christopher Nolan, uh, and and you get it in in heightened dramatic fashion. It, it's an interesting movie, you know. It's doing supposedly very well in the theaters. A lot of people have gone to see it. It's raking in. A lot of money and I have to say it, it, it's really surprising it's surprising because the movie is complex it, it, it it's going on in at least three different time periods you've got different flashbacks and different points in time to different places it, it you kind of have to stitch it all together and keep a track of everything so it's not an easy movie to watch it's a it's a challenge you're, you're working and we'll get to that I think I think that's actually a, a problem with the movie, but you're working, you're working to keep track of everything. You're working to keep track of the characters. You're working to keep track of motivation. And, but you're mainly working just to keep track of the uh, uh, time zone, right? Which, which uh, time period, uh, the particular scene is, uh, is, happening, uh, is happening right now. Uh, but, but it's a movie where, where dialogue is king. This is a movie of words. It's a super intellectual movie. It, this is not an action movie. There are no car chases. There's a big explosion, but once, I mean, small explosions otherwise, but one big explosion. There's some special effects early on, in a sense, describing, I think, the mental processes that are going inside of Oppenheimer's head. Again, I, I didn't particularly like those, uh, but but trying to trying to give us a sense there's there's some genius going on here um but there's no action there's a little bit of suspense but it's kind of intellectual suspense there really isn't any action there's no real mystery uh there is this is a character study it's a historical study. It's a commentary on a particular period of time. It's history. Why are people going to see it? I mean, I'm impressed. All I can say is I'm impressed. I, this is, I, I wouldn't have expected this kind of, um, this kind of edge. I don't, I don't think it's boring. I don't think if, if, if but, it, but I'm surprised in a culture where the next you know, the next superhero movie is what everybody's interested in, everybody's talking about, everybody goes and see, uh, where you, with a sequel after sequel after sequel, where the more you blow things up, the, the better the movie does. An intelligent movie like this is just stunning that is doing so well. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, I think it's a positive statement on the culture. Maybe there is, maybe there's a real desire for dialogue driven, character driven complex plots that that tell an interesting fascinating amazing story about human beings wow wouldn't that be kind of revolutionary <laughs> let me just say uh take a second to say thank you to dylan who just became uh it just did his first first super chat and he did it for 50 dollars. so thank you dylan we'll get to the questions at the end so uh once 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 i'm i'm finished with the topic um but thank you. Yeah, we're, we're about halfway to where we need to be and, uh, you know, in less than half an hour. That's great. Thank you, guys. So, uh, so the movie's super intelligent. It's, uh, it's a smart movie. I think the dialogue is sharp. 
I think the dialogue is interesting. I think everything about this is, is interesting. The challenge with the movie is that it doesn't really know what it's saying. It doesn't really have a, a theme. There's a sense in which it has, it has two basic stories. It has the story of, of Los Alamos, which primarily is a heroic story, but a heroic story tainted with a, a, a sense of, uh, you know, responsibility, fear, uh, uh, and, and uh, you know, angst focused on the, the, the fact that a weapon of mass destruction like mankind have not known before, has just been unleashed. So a certain justification for the angst and, and, and the worry. So that's certainly part of the theme and, 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 and part of it, and part of the whole. And, and you're never quite sure at the end what Oppenheim thinks of all of it. That is, is he, is he yeah, we had to do it, and, and, and it's, a, it's a good thing, and... Uh, it's 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 very unclear, and he's and he's very focused towards the end on we should negotiate with the Soviets uh, uh, as if negotiating with evil ever works and as is ever worthwhile, and we should have uh, control of these things, and uh, so it, it kind of under undermines I think part of the, the heroism and the, the the achievement that is the um, uh, the uh, the building of the bomb. So that's one story. It's, it's, it's the bomb, the building of it, the achievement that is to build. I think that it's really fascinating. His, his attitude towards other scientists, the way they work together, the way they achieve what they achieve, and at the same time, the inner conflict that is within him, which goes throughout the whole movie. That's the one theme that goes throughout the whole movie is the, the inner conflict about this particular project that Oppenheimer, and that never really gets resolved, and maybe maybe the answer that Christopher Nolan will tell us is, well, it just doesn't get resolved. There is no resolution to it. This is a, he's torn, and he always will be torn, and, and if you ask Christopher Nolan, what do you think, Christopher Nolan, he'd probably say, I'm torn too. So there's no resolution to that. The second theme that runs through much of the movie because of the way it's structured with flash forwards and flashbacks and so on, is the theme of persecution, um, the theme of uh, political persecution around, uh, actually, the, the, in a sense, there are three themes, right? It, it, three storylines. The, the second storyline is the storyline of persecution around the fact that he had contacts, that he was sympathetic to communism. Uh, then, even when he stopped being sympathetic to communism, he, uh, he had contacts with communists during Los Alamos and afterwards, and and this is in, in in you know in the context of that somebody stole the Los Alamos secrets and provided them to the Russians. If you know the history, it's pretty much been proven that it wasn't Oppenheimer. We know who the people were. Who Fuchs, one of the physicists there, provided the information to the Soviets, as did a few others. So there was a number of people providing the information. Uh, 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 giving the, the nuclear secrets to the Soviets, they didn't sell them because they didn't need to because they were they were sympathizers with communism. Uh, so it wasn't Oppenheimer. Uh, so there's that theme of uh, is he a communist? Was he a communist? Did he did he commit treason? Uh, how do we treat him given that he's an American hero, but at the same time undermined? Uh, maybe undermined it. Still has maybe some sympathies to communism. How do, we, how do we relate to that? And again, the movie is ambiguous. It doesn't really take a stand on, on, uh, on communism and on um, good, bad, how we should view all this. And then the third is a, a, a storyline about a basically an ambitious American politician who basically, uh, uh, you know, seeks vengeance uh, because he thinks that, that Oppenhauer has slighted him and uh, seeks, seeks uh, vengeance against him. And, and in seeking vengeance, there is an opportunity then for Oppenheimer to be redeemed as a hero. So, again, a complex 
story because you have all these three themes. Now, do all these three add up to anything? And it certainly seems that they add up to a, a heroic view of Oppenheimer, a positive view of Oppenheimer, a kind of a noncommittal view of, uh, 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 of the affiliation with communism and, uh, and, and what it all means, uh, certainly a critique of American politics and the way they were handled and the, the people involved in the American political system and the FBI because they basically, uh, the harassment of von Oppenheimer, and then, you know, the Schultz guy, the guy played by Robert Downey Jr., uh, Louis Strauss, who, who, who is trying to just seek political power at Oppenheimer's expense, and that, that again, is a critique of kind of the, the politics of it all. So it's ambiguous in terms of uh, the political stature. Uh, so I think it, I think it, it you know, I think a really good movie, a really good movie, you're in the universe. You're right there. You, you, you're emotionally connected with the story. You're mostly connected with the characters. And I have to say, the jumping around timelines, while interesting, while interesting, and, and, and interesting to follow and interesting to... to to keep track of, and, and, and the dialogue is interesting, and it's got a pace to it, it leaves you a little bit emotionally removed, because instead of just sinking in and being in that world and, and following the story and living that story in that world, you're constantly shifting worlds, and you're constantly having to keep track of where you are. I, I think that's just a problem with these kind of movies, that go from so while I found it interesting and stimulating it wasn't as a uh, emotionally satisfying and emotionally embracing experience and again I'm not sure and I'd have to watch it again and, and I probably will watch Oppenheimer again it's a complex enough movie worthy of it uh, I'll probably watch it again because I am interested in the you know if, if does it add up to anything does the movie add up to uh, one theme, to one definitive take on Oppenheimer, right, on Oppenheimer? All right, so, so that's the movie. I definitely recommend seeing it. It, it. it really is an intellectual movie. It's a movie worth supporting. I'd like to see more movies made like this about serious topics, serious stories, great actors that are dramatic, character and, and dialogue driven. Uh, it, it, it doesn't completely engage you emotionally because I think of the jumping around, but, but there's also the fun and the challenge of keeping track of all of that, so, so definitely worth seeing.